My name is uh, Dr. Ashley Frayling, and today I'm going to be talking about a little bit about my role here at the University of Exeter as a criminological lecturer, but also about my own research interests and also about my role within the criminal justice system that I currently um, hold and how we bring that into our research and how we bring that into our um, classroom as well to bring really the real world into your learning experience and why I think that is so important. So a little bit about my background, um, I did, um, I actually was a University of Exeter student myself long, long, long time ago, unfortunately, um, and I did psychology as my first undergrad. Um, I then was one of those cliche, don't know what to do with my life, and went on to do a master's in criminology, where I fell in love with the idea of talking about why people behave they do, why people get in situations they do, and whether that's to commit crime or actually not to commit crime. Why is it that most of us don't commit crime? Why do we stay within the legal rules and regulations? And so at that time, it sort of grew this interest for me in terms of policing the criminal justice system and people on their worst day and their best day and why we end up there in those situations. So um, after that, I went on to do the PhD in law and then started in my role in sort of lecturing and teaching within the subjects that I find so interesting and um, I find so sort of pointful in teaching in, as it has something to say about all walks of life. So we might be talking about some people in some situations, but actually that can reflect on such much wider issues in terms of how is Brexit going to affect um, European arrest warrants? Um, how are we going to, um, you know, talk with different police forces? Forces, um, the pandemic, how you know officers have been out there enforcing new laws on, on members of the public and how do we have those conversations and how do we talk to the community about those sort of things. So it's really relevant and of the moment and as, uh, what is going on at this time. So where does my role within the criminal justice system sit and how does that feed into my own research interests and how does that feed into my teaching as well? So I have been a voluntary police officer for approximately about over 14 years now. Um, I actually joined when I was a university student um, to push myself out of the boat to go and experience something different. I came from a you know very wonderful background in, in terms of my family, my friends and the experiences I've had in life. And so walking into homes where you know children might you know, have lived a very different life than I have and the situations and environment and, and um, family life that they've experienced was a huge eye opener for me and about how I wanted to help people and maybe change their lives and make those sort of little differences as well. So I became a voluntary police officer. I now have moved up the ranks and I'm now superintendent. I'm here in Devon and Cornwall. And actually, if you look at special constabulary for Devon and Cornwall, you indeed will see um, this lovely face as well. So um, the sort of idea being that I've had those sort of various interests in those various areas. Now, what that also means is that I can talk about experiences that I have actually been to myself. I can bring in guest lecturers um, from all walks of life, from firearms officers to defence lawyers, um, to uh, people working within charities, helping the vulnerable, working with the um, homeless community, all sorts of things um, that you might sort of be interested in, that you might find sort of very sort of eye-opening um, and that you might find really interesting to sort of research and to investigate and to talk about. And we have some very lively debates about what is when should someone be found guilty, for example, and when, um, you know, when is someone a victim of a crime? Is it after or before someone has been found guilty of a crime? So very lively debates and you guys get to ask all sorts of wonderful um, questions that I wouldn't even think of. So there's all sort of those ways that we sort of bring that aspect into the classroom. The other aspect is it feeds into my research interest. Now, my research interest in particular are in terms of the well-being and this really unique group of people who are like me and that we hold full-time jobs um, and then in our free time, I don't have much of it anymore, but that free time that we sort of set aside for ourselves, we go put on a police uniform and we take on the same powers as a regular officers, the same uniform, the same equipment. Um, I have to train multiple times a year for fitness levels, for the equipment that we carry, all sorts of things like that. And so we have this dual sort of life where we're half working within the criminal justice system and half working in sort of the sort of mainstream um, employment um, streams as well. So obviously you can see I have a key interest in various areas and I feed it into my research and my um, interest. So I'm unique in the fact that I get to 
study and work around what I like to do in my free time as well. But my main interest in terms of these are in terms of the well-being of these officers. So they've been from everything from running around in you know, cars with flashing blue lights to working events, to working large scale sort of incidents, to standing with victims of crime, talking with victims of crime, um, maybe sort of being at sort of various crime scenes, things like this. So actually that can feed into all sorts of things where psychological effects, the impact it has on your family and your friends that you work with as well. So a lot along the way is in terms of how do we bring that in? How do we investigate that? How do we talk about that well-being of professionals as well? So um, I currently am doing a small piece of research where I am um, interviewing um, special constables about their well-being sort of health, what support they get, what they might need long term, short term to deal with the incidents that they are going to as much as anything else. And that in turn feeds into my wider research interests as well. So I currently th sit on a national board and I've also just started to join an international um, board of advisors as well in terms of um, policing and in particular reservist auxiliary and voluntary side of policing that happens outside the mainstream where my main interest sits. So we are starting to look at um, sort of more national pieces of work in terms of gender. Um, so women within policing and particularly women within a very small, unique group of people who choose to do this in our free time. How do we recruit more women? How do we support um, different groups within that society and that culture that they join when they join the police force as well? So we bring all of that in to my research interests as well. And now also I bring that into the classroom. So we have, you know, we, ha we talk about everything from um, local crime and how the police respond to that, to the victims of crime. We might go on to talk about international crime. So different police forces, comparing them, talking about their different use of force, their equipment, um, who they recruit, how they deal with incidents. Um, and then we move that on to international crime and criminal behavior and why we choose to behave in certain ways. Do we choose at all? Are we the um, byproduct of our environment, our status, our sort of background, our biology? All sorts of things will start to feed into who we are and what we do um, with it as human beings which is why it's so fascinating. And you can start to think about how all those different areas, such as sociology, philosophy, psychology, history, um, even music, even culture, religion, can all feed into those conversations that we are having in terms of those wider interests about why do people behave the way they do. So um, part of that would be coming onto those modules and sort of talking about that, investigating that, um, sort of studying all those aspects about sort of human behavior, the criminal justice system itself, and actually about, you know, future careers and employment opportunities, work placement ideas, what you might want to go on and do, what you might be interested in. Because even if you're not part of going on to be part of the criminal justice system, those wider questions that we are having, those wider thoughts that we're having will all go towards um, your future in terms of wherever you go and whatever you take away from your degree. I think it's really important to bring that sort of um, real life into the classroom and to bring alive those experiences and those thought patterns and what we do and how we experience them and actually about bringing you into the criminal justice system, which is often a very closed institution, a closed sort of system to those who never experience it. Most of you, hopefully, will never experience it in your life. But for a very small proportion of people, they do have that close connection with that sort of system. But actually, we should be having those wider discussions about what it is it that we would want as a society, our criminal justice system to stand for and to be part of. So when we sort of talk about all of these areas of interest to me, um, and the sort of teaching side and the research side, um, you can start to see um, where all those sort of feed in and where we sort of lovingly study them here, investigate them here. And, and I, hopefully you will come and join us and discuss that and be part of that as well. <laughs>